A Lion locomotive in 5 inch gauge part 3. Test running on a rolling road using compressed air. And as always the first thing to do is to oil every moving part. And then because this engine has slip eccentric valve gear, before opening the regulator I need to rotate the wheels either forward or backwards. And in this clip the engine is running in reverse. When I shut the regulator and move the wheels forward, then open the regulator again, the engine runs in a forward direction. I'll stop talking for a short while and let you have a listen to it. From that short run I can see that there are problems with this engine, which for me is a good thing, I cannot make videos if the engines are perfect. And I knew this one wasn't going to be perfect, and it's not. And what are the main problems that I can see immediately? Well, problem number one is a minor one, the engine is over-oiling, radically over-oiling. The main problems that I've found with the engine immediately are as follows. The crank axle needs some attention because it's very slack and it's moving around. Because this is a slip eccentric type of engine with very simple valve gear, this is not a big job. But it will be a while before I fix this problem because I have too many jobs currently underway. The play in all of the crank webs on the main crank axle is the reason why the wheel looks like it's wobbling about. In fact, it's definitely wobbling about, it was the first thing I noticed. Other problems related to the main crank axle is the fact that the external crank that connects to the coupling rod is loose. Oh yes, and the crank pin is also loose and the coupling rod needs rebuilding. Having said all that, the engine runs surprisingly well, and I've seen a couple of videos of this engine running on the track, and it seems to run fine, so what's the problem? Here's a close-up view. Can you see what the problem is? The side plate on all of the coupling rod bushes is not the problem, but the loose crank and the fact that the coupling rod looks like it's going to drop to pieces is a problem. If you look at the external cranks, it looks like they were bushed, Possibly the centre hole was originally machined the wrong size. You can clearly see there's definitely a bush in there. A bush with quite a bit of play on the axle. When I look at the front one, it's not too bad. This is quite a good fit. But at both sides, the crankshaft is too short. I'll replay the image of the front crank and you can see the difference. This has a centre hole in it. And the crankshaft sticks out of the crank web just a small amount. I want to give the water gauge some attention, the glass is dirty, I don't need to dismantle it, but I'm taking it off to just have a close look. I intended to fit a three cock water gauge to this engine, so I phoned Blackgate's engineering, but unfortunately they didn't have one and didn't know when they were coming back into stock. And before anyone writes in to tell me, yes I am aware that I can buy three cock water gauges from other companies who sell miniature water gauges. But I like to shop for parts at Blackgate's Engineering, they are friends of mine. In any case, there's no rush, I just put some blanking plugs in the holes, because at the moment I've no intentions of steaming this engine for a while. The four and a half inch scale traction engine that I have has been a very big and long job. And in contrast to the traction engine, this is not a long job. I shortened the threaded shaft to the dummy safety valve. Then I put it all back together and used some Loctite 603 to hold this brass fitting in the top of the tube. I don't know, call it OCD, call it what you like, but it really annoyed me that one of the shafts was sticking up and the other one wasn't. But now, after a minuscule amount of work, it looks a lot better. I also removed the regulator handle and cleaned that up because it was a bit rough. 
I really do not like hammer and file engineering. I like things to be finished properly. Once again, I will stop talking for a while and give the engine another run. That was in forward motion, as before, shut the regulator, rotate the wheels towards reverse and open the regulator again. And now it runs backwards. The whistle is a bit feeble, but then there's only about 25 psi on the clock. There's plenty of room under the footplate where the whistle lives to fit a larger whistle. I'd like to show you something. I'm removing the nut that secures the connecting rod to the crank pin. Something is wrapped around the thread. I think it's just a piece of cloth. Because the ends of the coupling rod is so slack, it's very easy to remove the coupling rod from the crank pin, which is also loose in the crank web. Hopefully, I will live long enough to fix all of these problems at a future time, but as I mentioned earlier, I am quite busy at the moment. I'm very carefully tapping out the taper pin, there it goes, and here with very little effort because it's loose anyway, I'm removing the crank web from the crank shaft. What I'm going to do with the help of a taper reamer is ream the hole through both the crank web and the crank shaft a little bit deeper. I'm holding the taper reamer in a pin vise. This doesn't allow me to put very much pressure on the taper reamer, and really I don't want to put much pressure on the reamer because if it's snapped off, it may be a bit of a problem. Reaming a parallel hole is fairly straightforward, but using a taper reamer is a little bit tricky. You only need to put light pressure on the reamer, and you don't want to ream it all the way through to the end. Here, using a very lightweight hammer, I'm refitting the taper pin, and it is now equidistant at both sides. Somewhat miraculously, there is no play. I'm now going to run the engine to see if the play develops again. I really like this model, it's just right, it's well made, but it needs attention. I'm quite looking forward to repairing the main crank axle, but anyway, I can't do it yet, I'm too busy. So for now, I'd just like to say, stay safe, stay well, thanks for watching, and I hope you found it useful. Please take the time to visit my Main Steam Models website, and click on the section of the website that says Video Playlists. And by doing that, you can find other videos that you may like to watch. And by using the playlists, you can actually watch the videos back to back.